G'day, I'm Mason Crane from the Fenner School of Environment and Society at the Australian National University. Since 1997, our team has been researching ways to integrate biodiversity conservation into farming landscapes. Farmers like yourself can make a huge difference to the biodiversity and the sustainability of your farm and the broader region. Now there's many things that influence biodiversity, but nothing more influential than scattered paddock trees. What is a paddock tree? They're large remnant trees, often eucalypts, relics of the forests and woodlands that once grew here. They are often the oldest living thing in the landscape, thinly dotted due to clearing or because they've been thinned out over time with natural attrition. Because of their spacing, their age and the fertile ground they grow on, these trees tend to have large spreading canopies, giving them a broccoli-like appearance. You can't argue that these trees are magnificent. They provide hotspots for biodiversity, which means they have a massive impact on the surrounding landscape. Their immense canopy provide a large crop of leaves, flowers and buds. Their massive area of bark can house geckos, spiders and insects. The cracks and hollows, both in living and dead trees, provide dens and nesting sites for insectivorous bats, gliders, owls, goannas, possums and parrots. For the threatened squirrel glider, paddock trees are used in preference to other vegetation in the landscape, such as roadside remnants, for feeding and sleeping. Paddock trees are hundreds of years old. A large percentage of the trees that we plant today may not even make it into the next century. Just to develop a hollow suitable for a possum and a glider will take over 150 years. So the resources that these paddock trees provide are not replaceable, not in our lifetime. Unfortunately we're losing paddock trees at a rapid rate. It's predicted within 90 to 180 years that we've lost all the paddock trees in the southwest slopes if current trends continue. The benefits of paddock trees are not restricted to biodiversity. There are some real production benefits for you. The most obvious production benefit of paddock trees is for livestock. In hot and cold weather, livestock use lots of energy trying to stay cool or warm. One study shows that a yearling steer's energy requirement increases two and a half fold if exposed to adverse weather conditions. Having better shelter for your stock will not only benefit them, leading to increased weight gain, but also result in more dollars in your pocket. Studies show that dairy cows will increase their milk yield by 3% when given access to shade trees. Lack of shelter can also result in animal health issues and mortalities in your stock. A classic example is in cold snaps, when sheep are just off the shears. It has been found that scattered paddock trees increase water infiltration, increase desired elements in the soil well beyond the canopy of the trees, and add to nutrient cycling. Paddock trees have been shown to have a significant influence on the abundance and diversity of insect pollinators found in crops. Over 75% of crops grown in Australia rely, to different extents, on insect pollination, with wild pollinators such as feral honeybees, native bees or hoverflies doing much of the heavy lifting. Without natural pollinators, canola yields can be almost halved. Birds and bats are nature's best pest controls. Just two or three paddock trees per hectare can result in a significant increase in these species. Not all of our paddock trees are looking as great as the ones that we've seen today. Some are suffering from a condition called dieback. Now dieback can be caused by a number of things. Some are natural and we can't control like droughts and wildfire, but others are caused by our farm management practices. Increasing nutrification for fertiliser or stock camps encourages trees to grow artificially and changes growth patterns. This can make these trees vulnerable to insect attack. Root damage can come from farm machinery or the pressure of 100 head of cows vying for shade if there's only a few trees left in the paddock. Changes in land use and the intensification of agriculture is also threatening paddock trees. If you have widespread dieback in your paddock trees, there may be some underlying issues such as salinity. 
You'll need to talk to experts about this and how to treat it, so contact your local LLS. Even if your paddock trees are looking as crook as this one, don't despair. Paddock trees have a remarkable ability to recover. And if you take the threats away, they can return to their former glory. So how can you make paddock trees work for you? The first step should be looking at an aerial photo of your property and coming up with a paddock tree plan. Try and find ways to incorporate them into your farm operation. Including as many paddock trees as possible in your plantings is a great example. Planting around your paddock trees can improve their health by protecting them against wind and encouraging more birds to control insects as well as buffering them from sprays and fertilisers and other detrimental agricultural impacts. By incorporating paddock trees in your new tree planting, you give your project a 200 year head start. It provides almost instant habitat for many threatened species. There are already farmers enjoying the benefits of protecting paddock trees. The value of mature trees on a property of our utmost importance for the wildlife. When taking on a new project, we try and incorporate as many mature trees as possible and find only great benefits to the rest of the farm. Including paddock trees in laneways may buffer the trees against the impact of general paddock management, particularly cropping paddocks, and provide alternate ways to get around your property. Maybe create a special purpose paddock such as a lambing paddock or off shears paddock. If the paddock is only used for this purpose, the spells between grazing may reduce stress on the trees, allowing for regeneration, at the same time providing a fresh paddock for vulnerable stock with good cover. In many areas, paddock trees aren't naturally regenerating, so farmers are trying to address that by recruiting more trees into the landscape. They can do that many ways, by planting single paddock trees like this, or larger scale tree plantings like this one. In some cases you may wish to implement a more direct intervention on a larger scale, such as Greening Australia's Whole of Paddock Restoration Project, which involves direct seeding and spelling paddocks. It is important to remember that only a small percentage of the trees you plant today will survive into the next century, so plant more than you think you'll need to give biodiversity a chance. If you're thinking about clearing paddock trees, consider the impact this will have on the biodiversity and the sustainability of your property. Remember there's no action that can truly offset the impact of clearing. If it is really unavoidable, you may be able to prevent or slow further loss by adopting measures to protect the remaining trees. Incorporating as many paddock trees as possible into your tree planting may be one way to achieve a positive outcome. Even when a paddock tree has been collapsed or has been knocked over, it can still provide important habitat. Whether it is lying where it has fallen or dragged to a more convenient location, this habitat, which has taken centuries to develop, will keep providing homes for wildlife, such as goannas, bearded dragons and tree creepers. When it comes to paddock tree conservation, no one has all the answers. It's likely that every different situation will require a different solution and most of the solutions will come from innovative farmers like yourself. If you want further information on how to develop a paddock tree plan, contact your local LLS. So by respecting these ancient trees and taking time to incorporate them into your farm plan, we will continue to reap the benefits these trees provide now and into the future.